What what impact? We just want to come back to Brexit because it's the it's the big issue. Um, what impact has Brexit had on our international standing? Well, the UK has seen its standing in the world plummet. I don't think that's any great secret. We've seen in surveys that have, that, that have been done that UK soft power standing has 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 fallen. Nobody knows what Brexit's for. It looks like a nationalistic project and as I quoted MEPs in the book saying this is an English nationalist project by Boris Johnson so you see that hit that's taken to our soft power standing and that's why it's so important for Scotland to increase and continue to enhance its international profile. I think that has to be done because you have a first minister in Scotland with good international standing there's an understanding of Scotland's distinctive place and approach to the European Union amongst our European and international partners. And I think that we need to um, continue to engage with the international community and we need to invest in that engagement as well. But that brings dividends in terms of our education sector, in terms of trade and our business sector, and in terms of our soft power and influence mm. at the same time. Indeed. And of course, now we have Brexit to uh, Gibraltar and especially Northern Ireland have emerged with the bespoke arrangements. Why, why not Scotland, um, who voted Remain but uniquely don't have special provisions? Well, this is this is quite striking. So Scotland has lost its membership of the single market. We've lost freedom of movement. That will hit every single sector in Scotland, every sector. And you'll know, Drew, I know you've been a champion of many of the businesses in your constituency, not least the small businesses who are so detrimentally affected by Brexit, because it does proportionately hit smaller businesses much more than the bigger businesses. And that costs jobs and it hits people's livelihoods. And at the same time as you've got nothing to show for it, then I think that questions um, that, that, that puts a question at the very heart of the union. And it's not as if, and, and where it's European Union membership changed the fundamentals of independence. Because what you're doing is it's not a choice between the UK union and nothing at all. Mm. You have a choice between unions here. One union in the UK is not a club for independent states. It's a club where the decisions are made, broadly speaking, centrally down at Westminster, whereas we saw with Brexit and in terms of electing our governments and having nuclear weapons based here, that one part of that um, group of nations can be easily overridden by the wishes of just one nation within this group. That can never happen in the European Union because in the European Union, it is a club for independent states. So that leaves us with a very distinctive choice. Do you want to be part of the UK, which is sitting outside the European Union, where you don't have much of a say with the internal market legislation further centralising and watering down the devolution you have? Or do you want to be part of the European Union, which is a club of independent states, including a number, Malta, Cyprus and Ireland, that became independent from the UK in reasonably recent memory in, in international affairs, that does give you that right? So there's a choice and you can't have both. You can have either or nowadays. And so people, I think, are going to have to make that choice. And I think people deserve to make that choice. And that's why you know, the SNP was re-elected just a couple of weeks ago on, 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 on an increased mandate to hold an independence referendum, yeah. along with the Green Party were also elected on that mandate as well.